This is Colombia, a country considered off-limits to most people because of drug cartels that once operated throughout the country and on the same mountains you are now watching. The situation has changed though, and the tourism industry is gradually growing with travelers coming from all around the world. I entered Colombia from its southwest border with Ecuador and made my way to Popayan, one of Colombia's most colonial cities and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. About 45 minutes away is Silvia, a small Andean town where the indigenous tribe called Guayambinos still lives as it has for centuries. Heading north and past the party city of Cali lies one of the most important coffee areas of Colombia known as the Armenia Coffee Zone. There are several villages in it where coffee plantations can be visited, but I recommend you head to Salento. This charming little town will not only show you what coffee is all about at any of the nearby haciendas cafeteras, but it's also just a short jeep ride from the Valle del Cocora, a unique valley that grows the tallest oil palms in the world. <laughs> The bus ride from Salento to Colombia's capital is about 8 hours long and offers some of the best road views of the country. I have to admit I was pleasantly surprised by Bogota. It is a modern, clean and lively metropolis that has nothing to do with the images I had from its unsafe days of the past. Today Bogotenos are proud of their city, and not without reason. The historic Barrio de la Candelaria and the views from the Basilic atop Cerro de Monserrate are not to be missed. When in Bogota, make sure you visit the Catedral de Sal in Zipaquirá, about an hour north. It is the only cathedral in the world completely made of salt and is well worth visiting, but unfortunately too dark for me to film. After the two-hour visit, I continue north to Villa de Leiva, a beautiful small town that draws travelers from afar. It's the kind of place that really doesn't have much going on, but because of this, the town's charm and its spectacular surroundings, travelers find themselves stocking up on energy and spending more time than planned. I eventually reached the Caribbean coast of Colombia, being the small fishing town of Santa Marta my first stop. It is very well known by backpackers who settle here for extended periods of time to meet other travelers and enjoy the small beach while eating great food. I found Santa Marta took credit for my liking and continued the following day to Cartagena, my final destination in Colombia. Founded in 1533, it is the most touristic city in the country and one of my top three favorite cities of all South America. The historical center of Cartagena is known as Ciudad Murallada and became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984. It is busy, clean, has colorful architecture and plenty of superb yet cheap restaurants. Make sure you observe your surroundings as you slowly walk along its cobbled streets. Odds are you'll find a local group performing a Caribbean dance for your entertainment.
As a wrap-up to my Colombia trip, I headed to Playa Blanca, a beach recommended by a friend while in Cali. The best way to get there is by boat, so I skipped the tourist trap and hopped on one of the cheaper and faster local speedboats and was there after 45 minutes of flying over the ocean. With turquoise waters and fine sand, it is a perfect place to finish my trip. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you want more info about the places mentioned here and others, please visit mytravelsite.com. Happy travels!